you know, videos like this, almost universally, were a bad idea. And I think they still are, but that's beside the point. Essentially, they can get a bit touchy-feely. They don't make any money. And the reactions usually are mixed. Yeah, so it's probably not that smart of an idea. But then again, I don't always act on the smartest of ideas. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Lazar. And today we're talking about my journey, I guess, with Warframe. Kind of intertwined with being a content creator of sorts. I started playing Warframe at the end of 2017, 2018, something of the sort. It's been a couple of years, and I think if Steam doesn't lie, almost, but not yet, 8,000 hours in the game. And with 8,000 hours, a lot of people will be wondering, hey, how don't you get burned out? And to answer to that one, I mean the primary answer has always been very simple. I don't play just Warframe. I generate content primarily for Warframe, but playing just Warframe, Monday to Monday, that could drive somebody cuckoo, I guess. Now, there was a time where all I would do was essentially be in Warframe and explore the universe and see what's on that planet and on that mission. And it, that little corner that normally was nothing most of the time, but sometimes there was a Kuria. And you guys know what a Kuria is, don't you? But if you don't know, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go get the Kuria doesn't really matter unless of course you're crazy about lore and you're a completionist and if you're a completionist oh my god there's a lot of stuff to collect in warframe from weapons to warframes to sentinel slash companions to posters to glyphs if you're that kind of person that simply wants to keep on collecting for the sake of the collection just that has them all then you might love your time with warframe but no i don't just play warframe over the years we made content for a lot of games from heroes of the storm the lost ark the forza horizon uh, all sorts of game reviews more recent times i decided to explore my passion for interneting technology in general now you see when the channel was founded the idea was games and tech because back then i think it was 2014 when i started the channel yeah in 2014 it wasn't clear to me or as a starting content creator or an aspiring content creator, because in my opinion, you're not much of a content creator if nobody watches your stuff. I did not know that I can't mix two things together. My idea was, I'll do the following. I'll do games and I'll do tech. Surely the one, those two are intertwined, right? So I can show off a computer build or a GPU or some RAM, and then I can show off a mobile phone and then we can play a few games. Surely that will work, right? That's not what Google wants. Google wants you to be essentially a slave to the algorithm. Google wants very specific things. And if you don't give Google what she wants, it wants, then you're shit out of luck, basically. Trying to not trick, get around the algo so that you can do what you like and have a semblance of success. <laughs> Good luck with that one. There used to be ways, and from time to time, there are ways to quote-unquote trick the algorithm, like with the release of uh, Shorts. You guys remember? Shorts was a half-baked idea to compete with uh, TikTok. TikTok is on the rise because, you know, everything is 15 seconds and everybody believes that all that's all they need, you know, to get the details, to get the info. It's 15 seconds, yes. Unfortunately, TikTok gave rise to Shorts. And Shorts, for the most part, outside of Discovery, are a giant waste of time. Not a complete waste of time. Again, Discovery is there a bit stronger on shorts. And you might be wondering, Lazar, uh, where are you going with this? Nowhere. Nowhere very fast. Because this is essentially a one of those old school channel update vids. And I see you should take your time and thank your subscribers. Thank you. My way of saying thank you is by putting out the best content that I can. While still satisfying Daddy Google. As if you, as previously said, if you don't satisfy Daddy Google, then Daddy Google doesn't pay you. If you don't get paid, content stops. That's all there is to it. So again, you got to walk some sort of a fine line between I want to do this and I want to pay my daughter's bills. Because you see, a lot of things have changed since I started being a content creator, but I'm just going to limit myself to the Warframe part. So from 2018 onwards. 
I quickly realized that there is no way that Google will allow me to do games and tech on the same channel. So last year, I started Pixar. Now, Pixar is my outlet for I want to do content, but I want to do content for the reasons that I wanted to do content, to have fun, to explore, to show off stuff. Look how cool this is, or you can do this with this, etc. So while that channel is entirely unprofitable, at least for the time being, it does serve as a creative outlet, if you will, for me. Oh, and if you're curious, and you're probably not, but I'm going to shove this down your throat anyway, I'm working on this review next. My friends, I have experienced VR gaming, and it's goddamn fun. And it does have a couple, a couple, a bunch of caveats. But I am working on this puppy right here. This is the MetaQuest 3. Nowadays, VR gaming is a whole lot more affordable because you can get a Quest 2 for like 200 bucks second hand, which gets you like 90% of this. So you can get yourself a good VR experience nowadays at an affordable price. Always stayed away from VR because of how expensive the bloody things could be. But nowadays, that's not the case anymore. It's not, it's not another gaming channel. It's a tech channel. Yes, yes. We got keyboard reviews and computer hardware reviews and lifestyle gadget reviews like lights upon your wall. Because I don't know what it is, but with more modern times, everything needs to be LED and everything needs to be colored. And you know what? I kind of like it. Yeah, I know the trend is, oh, I hate RGB all black, please. Of course, sure, but I, I like my RGBs. Besides, I can always turn them off when they piss me off. Here's another thing that changed. I used to drink nut tea. I drink tea. You know why? I started to care a whole lot more about my health. Why? You want to live forever? Well, the point is, when I started doing this, I was simply a different person. I liked and wanted to do different things. And what I like hasn't really changed all that much over the years. What I need to do and the responsibilities that I have now are a bit higher as a husband, as a father, primarily. And I won't lie to you, 2022 for me was not a great year. It was the year my father passed. And all of that year, essentially that year beat me into submission. It showed me that you may think you're on top of the world, but eventually life will bitch slap you so hard. Let's see if you can get off the ground. Mm -hmm. How fast can you dust yourself and get your ass off the ground? That's basically what 2022 taught me. When I started all of this, I had my father with me. I had my grandmother. They passed away, and I won't lie, that had a huge impact on me. But also, I was blessed with the most amazing baby girl in the world, and I love her so much. So you see, daddy can't do anymore strictly what he wants, like I used to once upon a time. It was just me and my wife, I was like, hey, I make a decent amount of money, I can pay my bills, but I'll do whatever I want. So that doesn't work anymore. Uh -uh. You gotta pay them bills. You gotta pay them bills because that baby isn't responsible for you you're responsible for her so the whole i'm just gonna do whatever the fuck i want kind of ended let me show you since we're strolling down memory lane something from 2018 now i warn you this is gonna be even more cringe than this video up until this point okay yeah okay good so this video I could never pronounce video correctly. Video. Oh, no, I can't. My, my accent is shit. And some of you asked about my accent. is a mixture. Because I lived a few years in Italy. A bunch of years in Romania. Now I'm in Germany. Also lived in France. A couple of years in Africa and Zimbabwe. So, well, not years. Months in Zimbabwe. My bad. So my language or my accent is a mixture of these things. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. Showing you two potatoes. Two potatoes. Went on a spy mission you see back then there it is five years ago um one of the biggest hurdles for me as a player were these spy missions the spy mission simply kicked my ass in the sense that it didn't matter how hard i tried i couldn't get around them and the reason for that has always been or was that i didn't understand how spy missions actually work and the thing is, now I got like tutorials on all of the relevant spy missions. <laughs> I can't believe this is the third time we're doing this. 
I hate these missions. I honestly hate these fucking missions. I walked into a closet. Dude, Warframe looks so wildly different. Now this is my friend Slave Friend. Yeah, uh, he was with me back then. Uh, he was one of the, if I remember right, he was one of the guys that actually pulled me into Warframe. Back then I was playing Heroes of the Storm semi-competitively. I was doing these guys, these gameplay things. My voiceover quality was even worse than now. Yes, that is possible. But I love the game. Decided to quit it eventually because I simply didn't like the way that the developer Blizzard Entertainment was taking that game. This was before the whole fiasco, before the whole you don't have your phones thing and all of the garbage that ensued. Yeah, so it was way before that. I had a bunch of friends that you like kind of pulled me into Warframe with them. This look, look me playing melee. I think that was right about when they started talking about melee 3.0 and never delivered on it. Sorry, D, I had to. I had to because you didn't. Oh shit. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, yeah. oh god. And nowadays, by this time, you have already finished. Yeah, yeah, I fucked it up. Oh my god. Dude, look at the, look at the weapons. I got a strun, the regular. Like a bow with Excalibur. Look at me doing it manually. Got it. I got it. Don't kill me now, goddammit. I think this was like the fourth or fourth time we tried that and we failed. Sometimes I failed, sometimes my friend failed. I, I don't think I knew how to stun the Munich scale back then. I don't think so. Dude, I didn't even have the clan emblems on this. I don't think we even had the clan. Still had the colors though. Yeah, there he goes. Atta boy, slave friend! No. <laughs> I love this guy, he's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. You see, my friends, that's how spy missions went for me back then. And my goal as a creator was to spare other players of my experience. Now, don't get me wrong, there were content creators back then. I was watching Tactical Potato because he's amazing. I was watching Guy Flynn a little bit, but mostly I was watching MC Gamers because he has, still has, that. I don't know, his, that melodic voice of his. Like, when I watch his stuff, I'm always like, ah, chill. I'm like in a sauna, chilling, and like listening to MC Gamers is like the ultimate Warframe relaxation to me. I can't listen to myself. No, my voice is fucking annoying. Every single time I need to listen to one of my vids before uploading, just to make sure, like the final pass through, just to make sure I didn't screw up anything, I always put it on 1.5x so it's like finishes faster. If you're a content creator, it is quite possible that eventually you will get tired of hearing yourself talk i wonder how my wife feels but that, that's not not important back to the point that's how things mostly started back in 2018. now we did come a long way and i'll be honest with you it has been sometimes smooth sailing and sometimes a bumpy road i don't have any intentions of quitting warframe i don't get that whole burnout thing because again warframe it's not the only game i play i I don't think I can't. I don't wake up, log into Warframe, and then, oh, it's 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to bed, I'm logging off. There was a time when I used to do that, but that's extremely, extremely unhealthy. Do you really want to get yourself burned out on Warframe? I don't think it's worth it. Now, granted, you can just simply play the updates. That's what a whole lot of players do when there's a brand new update. They reinstall Warframe, they come back to Warframe, they check out the update, and then a couple of weeks later, they quit again, come back again, etc. What I recommend is simply play all of these amazing games. There are so many games coming out nowadays. Uh, they're not as clean, I want to say, as they used to be. Nowadays, we're filled with microtransaction or gotcha bullshit. There's all sorts of ways to try to squeeze every last penny of you consumer fuck, uh, us consumer fucks. That's what gaming companies do because at the end of the day, this is a business. But there are gems in the rough that come out. For example, you guys remember the days where everything was on the disc? You know, you bought a CD with a game, you actually owned it, and everything was on it? Yeah, that, that's not really happening anymore. But there are exceptions. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is a goddamn masterpiece. Baldur's Gate 3 took a genre which I thought was dead and buried, a beloved genre, a beloved old school genre, and essentially made it the queen of the ball 
what was it? Well, that prom queen or something like that. Yeah, you get the metaphor, right? It's amazing. It's incredible. I still can't believe they did it. Which just goes to show you, if you want to make good games, oh, they can make good games. Hats off to the dev team, to the voice actors, to everybody behind Baldur's Gate 3. It's a goddamn masterpiece. And if you haven't played it, the only reason not to play it, if you don't enjoy the turn-based style combat. If that's not for you, sure. But outside of that, Baldur's Gate 3 is just insanity. And you're doing yourself a disservice by not playing such an amazing game. I even played card games. Did I tell you I played card games? I used to play Need for Speed 2 back in the day. Back in the day when you would go enter FZR 2000. You guys remember FZR 2000? And from the sky, the FCR would drop. And it was the fastest card in the game. I think so. Alongside Carmageddon. Carmageddon was also good. And I do play Forza Horizon 5. It's, it's incredible how far we've come in terms of technology. But we're basically doing the same freaking thing. Uh, that's a discussion for another time. That leads me down a road where we haven't really evolved. That's the whole conclusion. And I don't want to get over it quickly. Which I might have done already. Fast forward to 2023. And in my opinion, Warframe is doing alright. While the numbers, if you go from year to year. Peak players or concurrent players or average players. They could have been better. Warframe is still surviving as a free-to-play game after so many years and for that i can only say bravo that's amazing that's a feat in and of itself in today's market to stay relevant to survive to turn a profit and to not milk your players because say what you will but warframe has one of the most fairest business models possible essentially i never bought plant not a single time because i never needed to and I can't say spend it hours on the trade chat because, ooh, there's one way to like not like Warframe, spend some time on the trade chat or on Warframe market or whatever else. I simply traded enough to have a couple of thousand plat and I'm good. It lasted me enough to get my forma and to get my slots or whatever else I needed. And I just focused on enjoying the game. If you take a look at the content that you can play, the old school content that is still available in Warframe right now, and compared to the latest and great, this with Santa Manatomica and the new addition to Deimos, there's like a huge difference in quality and what you can do, how enjoyable the game is. And since we're on the subject, you might be curious. <laughs> how do you enjoy Warframe the best? And from a technical perspective, try an ultra wide monitor. I've been saying this for actual years. The 21 by 9 aspect ratio in Warframe works so beautifully well. Turn up that FOV. If you get motion sickness, then I'm sorry. But if you don't get motion sickness, go for that ultra wide, a 27 inch or a 32 inch or something like that, and enjoy Warframe like that with as high frame rate as you go. Uh, 120, 144, something like this. It is truly a game changer. Now, don't overdo it because just between you and me, I can't see any goddamn difference between. 120 and 175 frames i can feel mm, a slight difference but i can't see a goddamn difference and i can't see or feel anything between 175 and 244 so no need to go overboard instead of pushing more than like 175 frames or 120 frames why won't you focus on getting yourself a good panel i'm not talking about ips try oleds oh that's different Try OLEDs with a capable HDR system because Warframe does have an HDR implementation. It's a little bit semi-abandoned, Mr. Steve, yes, but Warframe does have an HDR option and I think I did a couple of Warframe HDR guides. When you tune it in properly to your display and it's not just give me the settings because it will depend on your display's peak brightness, you get the most amazing experience, visually speaking. So, look towards an OLED panel, Look towards a capable HDR display. Look towards an ultra-wide gaming format. And I know that a display like that is fairly costly, but I don't know, justify it somehow, right? Use your brain, justify it somehow, and you will love yourself, your Warframe experience even more. <laughs> anyway, let's get back on point. There is no point. In case you missed it, this is basically a rambling vlog, but I still want to touch on a couple of things in no particular order because I can't be asked to write a script for this freaking thing. Warframe back in 2018 and Warframe now, two very different beasts. While the bones may be the same, the developer took 
the game in a very specific direction. And at times, I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure they're not just picking stuff up, throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks. Not that I'm opposed to something like that. And for the most part, I agree on most of the developers' decisions with a couple of exceptions. And the biggest one, of course, being Melee. A lot of you guys still ask, hey, Lazar, why no Melee reviews? Because there's nothing to review. The builds are like one, two builds. And I showcased them both in my Incarnate Hate Guide. If you want to check that one out. And the only reason I did that is because I made a dumbass promise that I had to keep. So there you go. I backed myself into a corner. Not important. What is important? That has been my only one big gripe with the developer. They took Melee in a direction that honestly I don't think does the game justice. Initially they had all these big plans for Melee 3.0. How they want to make like a spectacle fighter kind of thing. They showcased this rage system. That never happened. You know. They gave up on Melee 2.99. They made it so like the rage system that they had planned or they had an idea for it wasn't a big deal. They shelved it. And that's code for D. We're not going to do it for the time being. Yeah. And now you have Melee that looks spectacular. Beautiful. All sorts of amazing combinations. But plays like garbage. You press one button. That's your gameplay. No. Though granted... I am pretty suspicious that the reason they took it in that direction is these bloody things. We're gonna get ourselves Warframe Mobile, and you know what works with mobile games? Something that needs a singular or maximum of two inputs. So how much you wanna bet you're just gonna be able to press your screen and your Excalibur is gonna whoosh whoosh the crap out of everybody while looking like it's doing something challenging and hard. It is what it is. At the end of the day, you know what? I kinda gave up on the melee system. It is what it is. It's probably gonna fill a role for mobile, and I still has my guns. And I do love my guns. Because after Warframes, probably the most interesting thing in Warframe are the guns. And I know there's a lot of comparisons to other games. For example, Destiny. That the gun plays like this and the gun plays not like that, etc. I always love the fact that I am able to pick up this weirdo. Unusual, let's not say weirdo. No. Different. A spacey futuristic weapon and basically go against hordes upon hordes of enemies now granted you're gonna say that doesn't involve a whole lot of skill no it doesn't no it does not but just like pressing one button to clear the entire room it does have its appeal and it does have a form of fun to it oh fun fact somebody's working on a special edition irl arca plasmore it's gonna be like 3d printed with lgv colors and the logo and everything for me so special thanks to Noisy the Silent, he's working on that, and as soon as it's done and it gets to me, I'm gonna make like a full video on it. Feed all and sexiness and stuff. I don't think you can order one, but remind me to ask him if you can. That's it. That's enough ramblings for one day. I don't know where I'm going with this. Alright, that's enough. It's outro time, and I think this is take five or six, because I'm getting this gnawing feeling that I'm forgetting something important that I wanted to talk to you guys about. In case you haven't noticed, there's no script, there's no bullet points. Essentially, this is entirely off-the-cuff improv. And that's fantastic when it comes to sincerity. In my opinion, you can't really deliver honest feelings via recording if you got it fully scripted out and fully edited. That's not how sincerity works. Yeah? I mean, sure, you can take a couple of seconds to think about what you're going to be saying, but if you're going to script everything out, then everything becomes semi-fake from my point of view. And that's fantastic. For a guide, but not so fantastic for a good old heart to heart. What I want to do in an outro, even though I don't have any bullet points, is thank you guys. And the way that I thank you is by continuously improving the content. I hope you noticed ever since 2023, we have up the ante when it comes to video editing, video quality, voiceover quality, structure, basically everything. And I will continue to improve for as long as I can. That is my promise to you. Outside of that, if you want to support the content, if you like what I do the way that I do, head on over to Patreon. You can make a pledge there. Or if not, if that's out of the question, what you can do is leave a like on a video or a comment. All of these interactions actually help the algorithm to push video upwards and higher. Or you can let your friends know, hey, this guy is making this content that I like. Why don't you check it out? And that's kind of it. As always, my name is Malazar. It is my hope that you didn't find this video too jarring. I'll catch you guys in the next one.